But hyphenation and justification settings. One of the things I say is that typography is about compromise. Um, and ultimately, it's up to you to decide which compromises you prefer to live with. Now, when a student this week asked me about the fact that her lines did not line up across columns, um, as these are not lining up, and we can see that most clearly at the bottom. The bottom of my column is a little bit ragged. Well, with InDesign, and you can build this into your style sheets as well, you can force your lines to line up across the page. And in fact, that's how I generally prefer working. So if we look at this document, you can see that we don't have this problem. If I were to draw a guide rule across this, just do it there. Those baselines, I didn't draw the guide very accurately, oh, this one's a little better, those baselines line up all across the page. And that's true at the bottom. You can see the drop from this line to the bottom of my grid is exactly the same. And that allows it to line up with these rules uh, that go up and down the page. Let me just turn that off and let's zoom in on that for a minute. And where I like my rules, if I have rules between my columns, is to line up with the X height, and that's what they do. By the way, these rules are on my uh, master page, and I just use a box frame filled with white to wipe them out. Uh, you can also these days build a rule into the paragraph itself, but in a mixed situation like this, where there are several styles, that rule would have to be built in in several places, and because the rule only goes between columns, it would have to be masked out on this one. So a lot of times the masking method is the one that works out best. So let's just go to my view and go to grids and guides, and I'm just gonna say show baseline grid. And I'm gonna hit my W key to show all my guides again. And you could see that's the baseline grid uh, going all the way across the spread and everything is locking to it. So if I move my box up a little bit and bump a line, it bumps out. So it goes line to line. If I move my boxes up and down, my frames up and down, they're always going to lock to that grid. So if you want to work that way, uh, I'm going to show you how to do it and show you a couple of things to look out for. So the first thing is we're just going to take this text and lock it to the baseline grid. So I am going to just take this and lock it to the baseline grid. Or you could build it into the style sheet uh, because, oh, I did it with the wrong one. You could build it into the style sheet as well. Uh, and, but I'm not going to do it uh, by the, the way I've shown it previously by redefining the style because I know that I have other overrides on this style as well, some tracking and that sort of thing. So I'm going to go to instead style options if I want to just capture some of the things and I'm going uh, and not others. I'm going to go to advanced. Yeah, that's not where it is. Indents and spacing and the line to grid, and you give it gives you two choices: uh, first line only, that would be the first line of the paragraph, or all lines. I almost always go all lines, and I'll click OK, and we are now locking to a baseline grid. And let's go to view for this document and say show uh, baseline grid, and it might hit my W key again so I actually see that grid. And here is what's happening is for this document, my baseline grid has been set for a number bigger than my leading. If we look at my leading, just come down here, my leading is set for 12. Uh, but this has a baseline grid that is actually smaller than 12. And so what InDesign is doing is it's locking these lines to every other line. And occasionally uh, uh, that can be a useful way to work if for particularly fussy purposes um, with uh, fairly dense grids. But for most of the time, you want a grid that matches your documents, uh, your, your preferences for letting. And so what I have to do is if this happens is I can go into InDesign preferences and go to 
grids. And for grid, I have a increment every 11 and a half points. Now I think InDesign's default baseline grid is 12 points. And so because mine is 12, if it was set for the, the default, it would have worked, but then we wouldn't have also, we wouldn't have seen how to fix it if it didn't. And I could say the other thing could be a problem too. Let's not change this to 12 at first. Let's change it to uh, 15. So I'll click OK. And it's now locking to every line, but my letting, it still says 12 up here, but because it's locking to the grid, it's actually every 15 points. I now have, de in fact, I have de facto 15 point lead, even though that's not what the paragraph is set for. So you could see the other thing as well if you're locking, but you may not. Uh, uh, but you may not notice it. So it's important to probably always check your document grid and make sure it matches your letting, uh, no matter whether you're, whether it looks okay or not. So let's go back to InDesign, go back to grids, uh, baseline grid, let's change that to 12. And then the other thing to know about is you can also make it uh, start at a different point on the page. So for example, uh, if I want this document to start a little bit higher, let me just move this down and I will just say, uh, let's say 2P9, because you can see there's a little bit of a gap between the top of my page and where my text is actually starting if I want that yield. So uh, let's just click out of that. Well, I think we just have to say, okay, to change it. And it does in fact go up higher. So now I am lining all the way across at the bottom. I don't have those slightly uneven lines. Let's hide that grid now because it's a little bit distracting. But that extra space has to go somewhere. And in this case, because I have a mix of subheads, and these subheads cannot be locked to the baseline grid because they are uh, you know, just a different size, a different letting. It just wouldn't work most of the time to lock them to the baseline grid. Um, we could just do that for sake of argument. And we could see the letting gets all messed up when we do that. So I have to pretty much leave it floating in this space. Uh, but that space, the space we had at the bottom, it had to go somewhere. And so where did it go? In this mixed use case, where I have different sizes and letting, uh, it means that I have slightly different spaces around this thing. So I sometimes like to draw a, a little box just as a, uh, a makeshift ruler. And so if we look at the bottom of that, we have that much space. And then we move it here, and we could see that's a really different amount of space. And we go there, and we have, yet again, a slightly different amount of space. Uh, so that's the compromise you have to make if you're locking to baseline grid, is in situations like this, the, the distance between your uh, subheads and your text is going to vary a little bit, uh, but it's just a matter of what you prefer living with as a typographer. And in my case, I usually prefer having it locked, having my lines locked up, having the bottom of my page clean, and living with a little bit of extra space. Um, sometimes a little bit of baseline shifting. I don't like to baseline shift, but if, that, if you want that space to be a little bit closer, you have to move to character we could just pop this up a little bit, but that's an override I can make, but I don't usually like to make.